3. The Session at the Right Hand of God. A. Scriptural Proof for the Session. When Christ stood before the high priest he predicted that he would sit at the right hand of power, Matt, 26 64. Peter makes mention of it in his sermons, Acts 2 verses 33 to 36, 531. In both of these passages the dative te dexii may have to be taken in its more usual instrumental sense, though in the first of the two the quotation in verse 34 favors the local interpretation. It is also referred to in Ephesians 1 verses 20 to 22, Heb. 10 12, 1 Peter 3 verse 22, Revelation 3 verse 21, 22 colon 1. Besides these passages there are several that speak of Christ's reigning as King, Romans 14 verse 9, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 24 to 28, Heb. 2 colon 7, 8. b. The significance of the session. Naturally, the expression, right hand of God, is anthropomorphic and cannot be taken literally. The expression, as used in this connection, is derived from Psalms 110 verse 1, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. To be seated at the right hand of the king might be merely a mark of honor, 1 Kings 2 verse 19, but might also denote participation in government, and consequently in honor and glory. In the case of Christ it was undoubtedly an indication of the fact that the mediator received the reins of government over the church, and over the universe, and is made to share in the corresponding glory. This does not mean that Christ was not King of Zion up to this time, but that he is now publicly inaugurated as Godman, and as such receives the government of the church and of heaven and earth, and enters solemnly upon the actual administration of the power committed to him. This is entirely in agreement with what Calvin says, namely, that the statement that Christ was seated at the right hand of God is equivalent to saying, that he was installed in the government of heaven and earth, and formally admitted to possession of the administration committed to him, and not only admitted for once, but to continue until he descend to judgment. INST, Book 2. 16, 15. It is perfectly evident that it would be a mistake to infer from the fact that the Bible speaks of Christ's sitting, at the right hand of God, that the life to which the risen Lord ascended is a life of rest. It is and continues to be a life of constant activity. The statements of Scripture vary. Christ is not only represented as sitting at the right hand of God, but also simply as being at his right hand, Romans 8 verse 34, 1 Peter 3 verse 22, or as standing there, Acts 7 56, and even as walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And it would be equally wrong to conclude from the emphasis on the royal dignity and government of Christ, naturally suggested by the idea of his sitting at the right hand of God, that the work in which he is engaged during his heavenly session is exclusively governmental, and therefore neither prophetical nor priestly. C. The work of Christ during his session. It deserves emphasis that Christ, while he is seated at the right hand of God, is not merely a passive recipient of divine dominion and power, majesty and glory, but is actively engaged in the continuation of his mediatorial work. 1. Since the Bible most frequently connects the session with the kingly rule of Christ, it is natural to think first of all of his work as king. He rules and protects his church by his spirit and also governs it through his appointed officers. He has all the forces of heaven under his command, the angels are his messengers, always ready to convey his blessings to the saints, and to guard them against surrounding dangers. He exercises authority over the forces of nature and over all the powers that are hostile to the kingdom of God, and will so continue to reign until he has subjected the last enemy. 2. However, his work is not limited to his kingly rule. He is priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. When he cried out on the cross, it is finished, he did not mean to say that his priestly work was at an end, but only that his active suffering had reached its termination. The Bible also connects priestly work with Christ's session at the right hand of God, Zech. 6.13, Hebrews 4 verse 14, 7 verses 24 and 25, 8 verses 1 to 6, 9 colon 11 dash 15, 24 dash 26, 10 colon 19 dash 22, 1 John 2 verse 2. Christ is continually presenting his completed sacrifice to the Father as the sufficient basis for the bestowal of the pardoning grace, of God. He is constantly applying his sacrificial work, and making it effective in the justification and sanctification of sinners. 
moreover, he is ever making intercession for those that are his, pleading for their acceptance on the basis of his completed sacrifice, and for their safekeeping in the world, and making their prayers and services acceptable to God. The Lutherans Stress the fact that the intercession of Christ is vocalis et realis, while the Reformed emphasize the fact that it consists primarily in the presence of Christ in man's nature with the Father, and that the prayers are to be considered as the presentation of legitimate claims rather than as supplications. 3. Christ also continues his prophetical work through the Holy Spirit. Before he parted with his disciples he promised them the Holy Spirit, to aid their memories, teach them new truths, guide them in all the truth, and enrich them out of the fullness of Christ, John 14 verse 26, 16,7-15. The promise was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost, and from that day on Christ, through the Spirit, was active as our great prophet in various ways, in the inspiration of Scripture, in and through the preaching of the apostles and of the ministers of the Word, in the guidance of the Church, making it the foundation and pillar of the truth, and in making the truth effective in the hearts and lives of believers.